Here at the Andrew Lokoops Corners inquest, there has been a shift in power. Closing arguments just wrapped and soon it will be up to the jury to come up with recommendations. Recommendations that are likely to include not only how the Toronto police interact with the mentally ill, but also the black community as well. I think a lot has been achieved in this inquest. Groundbreaking. That's how lawyer Selwyn Peters views the last four weeks at a coroner's inquest where race and implicit bias were common threads. A month of often emotional, pain ridden testimony into the Toronto police shooting death of Andrew Loku. We heard about the training, the inadequacies of training. We heard about the police culture and, and the culture that allows certain things to occur um, that we're trying to get recommendations to prevent. Loku died July 5th, 2015, after being shot twice by police in his apartment hallway. The jury heard Loku was drunk, wielding a hammer, walking towards officers and ignoring their orders to drop it. They also heard more about the man who died that night. Loku was a refugee from Sudan, a former child soldier who in Canada was struggling to work two jobs and seek help for his mental illness. Jonathan Scheim, the lawyer representing his family, telling the jury the officers who confronted Loku opened fire because they panicked and, quote, lost sight of good sense and their training. They shot him because they let their fear of a black man with a hammer 8.5 meters away overcome what should have been a compassionate and humane response. Adding, if only they had let compassion guide them instead of fear. If only they let good sense and training guide them instead of panic. If only they had followed a multitude of recommendations made by previous inquests, then Andrew would be alive today. Loku's death sparked days of protests from Black Lives Matter. Last year, the provincial coroner announced an inquest into Loku's death after the group camped outside Toronto Police Headquarters for two weeks. At least three groups today calling for more de-escalation training for officers or a rethinking of that training altogether. But either the training stinks or they're just not listening, right? There's only two options or, or a combination of the two. Nice to meet you. A, a lawyer for the Toronto Police Association welcomed more training and renewed calls for tasers in the hands of all frontline officers. Everyone's interested in outcomes that don't end up in death and de-escalation is a very important part of that. Understanding racial issues is an part, important part of that and the Toronto Police Association supports training around that. Now tomorrow is expected to be the final day of the inquest. The jury will come back here at 9 a.m. to get instructions on how to sculpt their recommendations.